What do you think of when I say the word obedience? For me, I think of dog training or a slave obeying a master. I mean, certainly many forms of obedience are good and necessary. For example, when my kids obey my instructions to hold my hand when we cross the road. But one of the most horrific examples of obedience was the attempted genocide of the Jews during the Second World War. The Nazi regime relied on the status and power of Hitler and other high-ranking officials because most of the dirty work was carried out by those of lower ranks. Indeed, most of the Nazis who were later convicted of military crimes simply said that they were following orders. They were just doing their job. It's very difficult for most of us to think of the soldiers who committed horrendous acts of torture and violence as ordinary people just doing what they were told. But psychology suggests that such is the power of obedience and authority. Being under someone's authority, in a sense, means giving them the right to make decisions for you. Again, this isn't inherently bad. Remember how I use my authority to make my kids hold hands on the road. The thing was, after the Second World War, many people in Europe and the United States started to think that there had to be something unique to the Germans that made them more obedient to authority than other races. But over in Yale University, one social psychologist was about to prove them wrong. In 1961, Stanley Milgram decided to investigate whether participants would obey an authority figure and carry out actions that caused severe pain to another person. Obviously, causing actual harm to someone else was highly unethical, so he devised a clever method. Milgram recruited 40 male volunteers between the ages of 20 and 50 and paid them for their time. They were told that this experiment would help reveal the potential effectiveness of punishment as a teaching method. The thing was, the whole experiment was a setup. So how did it happen? Well. Each participant entered the room with another supposed participant who was actually a confederate. They pretended to draw names from a hat to determine who would be the teacher and the learner. But the draw was fixed so that the participant always became the teacher. The experimenter then asked the learner a series of questions and it was the teacher's job to administer an electric shock using the machine in front of him whenever the learner made a mistake. Of course, the shocks weren't actually real, but the participants all thought they were. They were even given a taste of a real shock at the start of the experiment so they knew what they were giving out. On top of that, every time the learner made a mistake, the teacher was told to give a shock at a higher voltage. If the teacher wanted to stop, the experimenter had pre-written lines to say in response, such as, please continue, please go on, or it is absolutely essential that you continue, or whether the learner likes it or not, you must go on until he has learned all the word pairs correctly. This was on the control panel of the machine that the participants had to operate. The experiment started here and would go up in 15 volt intervals. The man playing the learner was instructed to pound his fist on the wall at 300 volts, and then again at 315 volts. After this, he would give no further answers, even though the shocks continued to increase in intensity with each incorrect question. Remember that at this point, they were supposedly receiving a shock that was described as extreme intensity or danger severe. So what did the participants do? Would they obey the instructions of the teacher, even if it meant causing severe pain to another human being? Well, at the beginning, there was 100% obedience, as expected, but this continued and continued. In fact, it was only after the 300 volt mark that some participants choose to disobey and no longer give shocks. But amazingly, 65% of the 40 went all the way to the very end, where the shock intensity didn't even have a description. In a follow-up experiment, Milgram decided to make the learner's pain appear far more realistic by giving them a series of actions to carry out at each shock level, like making audible sounds of pain. At 165 volts, the learner would ask to be released. At 195 volts, he would complain of heart pain. At 270 volts, he would scream hysterically and cry to be released. And after 330 volts, he would become completely silent as if unable to respond to the pain any further. Incredibly, with this level of feedback about the intensity of pain, the obedience rate only dropped by 2.5%, meaning only one extra participant refused to go all the way to 450 volts.
Milgram concluded that people are very likely to perform actions contrary to their beliefs and wishes, such as harming an innocent victim if they are instructed to do so by an authority figure. He suggested that there were various reasons that could explain the high levels of obedience, such as the prestige of Yale University, or the belief that they were taking part in valuable research, or that the learner had volunteered for the role, and the roles had been allocated at random. Milgram's study has since been reproduced many times in many countries, and almost every instance, around 60-65% to of participants showed total obedience, even in Australia, this little band of misfits. This strongly suggested that obedience to authority wasn't simply a characteristic of Nazi German soldiers, but of all humankind. These findings are very sobering and, to me, show the immense responsibility that comes with having a position of authority, even if it's just with helping my kids stay safe on the roads. 